So here we are about to embark on the Tesla drive day from University of WA to Dwelling Up, Western Australia. It should be a very interesting drive where we're getting to see the Teslas of Western Australia for the very first time. After meeting the very welcoming and friendly Tesla owners, it was time for a quick rundown on the directions and what to expect for today. If we can take a ride on the Hoffman Valley train, going down the hill, and then back up via steam, which should be pretty exciting. And it'll help to offset our CO2 savings that we've made. <laughs> <laughs> After a short scenic drive through WA, it was time for a quick pit stop at North Dandelup, where we were lucky enough to take a ride in the Tesla Model S. The first thing you'll notice when getting into the car is the giant touchscreen display where you can control all of your air conditioning, music, configure it for a rear camera and even have maps for navigation all at once. The next thing you'll notice is how unbelievably quiet the cabin is. With just the sound of the road, this is great for conversations or to get lost in your favourite music. It feels really strange to take off without the conditioned and expected sound of an engine. No sound, it's just... Oh wow. <laughs> it's like putting on noise cancelling headphones for the very first time. <laughs> Speaking of takeoff, this is the P85D, which means it can go from 0 to 100 in 3.2 seconds. Want to see what that looks like? Put your head back on. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Did you know that was a Let's see that again. <laughs> oh, wow. That's from 30 to 60 instantly. The only thing I can compare that to is this. Upon arriving at Dwelling Up, we were treated to a delightful Model X feature. Okay, it's it's the Tesla dance. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, impressive wingspan. Very good. <laughs> This little song and dance is one of the car's many hidden easter eggs that highlight its ability. It really demonstrates where technology and innovation can meet to have fun. But the part that really blew my mind was the summon feature, where the driver can control the car from the app, where it will reverse and make small adjustments to avoid any obstacles or other cars, and park itself. Stop. Model X. Mind blowing. Very nice. To that I say, all right, all right, all right. Nice. Next, it was time for some lunch at the Blue Wren Cafe, where you can sit down, grab a meal and a milkshake, and listen to many tales and tips from Tesla owners. It was here where we had the chance to sit down with Trevor Pinnington, who helped organize the day. A Tesla advocate and proud owner of a Model S, he was more than happy to sit down and answer any of our questions in a segment that I'd like to call Debunking Tesla Myths with Trevor Pinnington. I'm Trevor Pinnington, I'm on the committee of the Tesla Owners Club WA. You can't drive a Tesla in the rain. I'm pretty sure you can, yeah, I've driven mine in pretty heavy rain. I have been zapped once. Yeah. <laughs> there aren't many places to charge a Tesla. Well, we're at one now. Uh, the Dwelling Up Visitor Centre has installed a three-phase power socket, for EVs, and that'll charge a Tesla at about 100 k's per hour. So in the time that we're having lunch, we'll recover the range that we used to get here. Don't they still need fuel? 
No, that's a hybrid. But no, they're full electric. Uh, Tesla only produce 100% battery. But you can't use aircon when running on a battery. Yes, they've got aircon and they've got heating. And uh, one of the great things is you can uh, precondition your car. So you can fire up the Tesla app if it's a hot day. Yep. Ten minutes before you get in the car, you can switch on the air conditioner. On a cold day, you can put the heater on, the mister on when the car's parked, and then uh, get into a nice, nice warm car. Tesla tips the app. The, the car has a uh, cellular connection and obviously the phone does as well. Shows you the interior temperature there, it's 25. Just check the range. So I didn't have a full charge when I left Perth this morning. Still got 206 k's range so easily you can get back to Perth. Can, if you've lost your keys, you can unlock the car on the other Or uh, if, say, two people sharing a car, one person's accidentally taken the keys far away from the car, they can start the car so they're. Uh, uh, the other person can use it. Uh, if you're in a car park, keep the horn, flash the lights so you can find it. Passengers, there's a media option that uh, comes up. Passengers can adjust what's playing the radio and the volume. Mm -hmm. I like that. You can't go on long trips with a Tesla. People will actually camp in a Tesla overnight. They can leave the heater on all night, or the air conditioner on all night, and they're comfortable the next morning still have enough range to get to where they need to go. A Tesla isn't safe. They can explode. I think it'll need to be a pretty severe accident for that. The battery's designed if, if there is a thermal runaway to vent the, the fire away from the car. And the fires are generally slow, so if, if one was to catch fire, uh, the occupants would have plenty of time to escape. And, uh, I think it, it is safer than a Can I just yeah. interrupt you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. With the Tesla, you have got the this Tesla 3 has come out as the safest car in the world. And indeed, it has. Do yourself a favor and check out videos online of Tesla test crashes. You'll see the inside occupants are safe and secure, and the car doesn't crumble. This is due to the battery pack running along the entire floor of the vehicle and the removal of an internal combustion engine from the front. This in turn lowers the car's center of gravity and prevents rolls, giving it a five star rating and labeled the safest car in the world. This is just the design and does not include the advanced autopilot technology. Combine the design with the onboard cameras and radar which can detect and respond to crashes and has already saved countless lives. I believe this will one day be a standard in the same way that seatbelts are now. Yikes. I think it's an incredible achievement to combine safety, performance and good looks. Next, it was time to begin the journey home, and we got to jump back in the P85D. You know, that car that does this. <laughs> Once they dropped us off, both Rob and Robin were more than generous with their time and answered even more questions for us. With the next segment, an interview with Rob Dean. Why do most people think Teslas won't work in Australia? Um, generally, the misinformation put out there by the mainstream media. Should everyone own a Tesla? Uh, not necessarily a Tesla, but I, th I think most people should own an electric vehicle where you can charge off the local power source, which is solar or wind, um, rather than importing fuel. Do you trust full self-driving? Will it work? Personally, I like to drive a car myself. I'm just old school, but I, I think the insurance companies will force full self-driving onto the public eventually. It, it is just a far safer way of driving. What's the best thing about owning a Tesla? You can charge from solar power and just a lot of fun. <laughs> Will a Tesla struggle with the Australian heat? No, when it gets hot, these actually work better. Lithium likes a bit of warmth, so the range gets better in the heat. What's the biggest misconception you've heard about Tesla? The batteries don't last long, which is completely untrue. Uh, the batteries in these cars, some of these cars have got 900,000 kilometres on the clock. This one's done 164,000 kilometres. Do you have some advice from a Tesla owner? I'd say don't go for a drive in the Tesla or you'll want to buy one. That's a great answer. Thanks so much. No really appreciate it. Really All up, the drive day was informative and excellent. We learned so much about the Teslas. A big shout out and thanks to Rob, Robin and Trevor from the Tesla Owners Club of WA for letting us tag along and experience these unique machines.
If you're curious about owning a Tesla in Australia, check out their page and ask some questions. My opinion is that if you're looking for a new car or if you're someone that spends large amounts of time on the road, a technology enthusiast or safety is important, then you should really check out a Tesla. But be warned, if you do test drive one, you'll want it.